This video demonstrates how to get started with BlueGiga's DKWT32i development kit, learn the basics of BlueGiga's iRap Bluetooth software, and shows how to use the kit to stream high-quality audio from a smartphone using the A2DP Bluetooth profile. We'll also demonstrate how to use the AVRCP remote control profile to pause and resume streaming audio playback, and show how to retrieve track and title information using AVRCP PDU commands. And finally, we'll perform a firmware update of the WT32i module on the WT32i development kit board using the UART interface. To begin, let's unpack the WT32i dev kit from the box. The complete kit includes a printed quick start guide and end user license agreement, the main development kit board, a rechargeable lithium polymer battery, a bare WT32i module, a micro USB cable, and a parallel port SPI programming adapter. For our demonstration, we'll need the development kit board, the micro USB cable, a pair of headphones or speakers, and a smartphone. We'll use an iPhone 5S here, but the experience is largely the same for any smartphone or tablet. The WT32i module runs BlueGiga's iRap Bluetooth software stack, which provides comprehensive Bluetooth functionality with an easy-to-use AT-style command set that operates over the module's UART interface. Therefore, we'll need a serial terminal application such as CoolTerm, RealTerm, or PuTTY to set up and manage communication with the WT32i development kit. We'll use CoolTerm for this demo. To set up the necessary hardware connections for UART communication, plug the micro USB cable into your host PC and into the UART connector on the development kit board. This provides power and communication using the development kit board's built-in USB to UART converter. Then, ensure that the power switch is set to USB and ensure that all five of the current headers have shorting jumpers on them. In this state, the green power LED should come on and stay lit. If the power LED doesn't come on, then it's possible that the voltage regulator setting within the IRAP configuration on the module isn't set correctly. If this is the case, then you'll need to send the correct command to change the regulator control signal. Until this setting is adjusted, the power LED won't be illuminated even if the module is powered on. We'll cover how to change this configuration later on in the video, but for now let's proceed with the next steps in this demonstration. Now, connect a pair of speakers or headphones to the 1 8 inch stereo audio jack labeled Line Out in the analog area of the DKWT32i main board. Note that the audio signal level coming directly from the module is enough to drive a typical pair of headphones, but most speakers will need some type of signal amplification. Finally, make sure that the PA switch is set to Audio PA. The development kit's analog audio output hardware is now properly configured for our demonstration. After you plug the USB cable into the UART connector, a new serial port should appear on your PC. Note that the serial port will become visible on the PC regardless of whether the module is on or not, or whether USB or BAT is selected by the power switch. Because the development kit's USB to UART bridge IC is powered directly from USB when connected. To begin a communication session with the development kit, open your serial terminal and configure the serial port that the computer allocated to the development kit to 115200 baud, 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit, with RTS CTS hardware flow control enabled. These are the factory default UART settings on the WT32i development kit board. Once the port is open, you should see the IRAP welcome banner appear showing the firmware build and copyright message. If the module is powered but you don't see the message, try pressing the reset button on the development kit board. If you still don't see the message, make sure that you've opened the serial port with the correct settings as noted in the previous steps. After verifying that you see the IRAP welcome message in the serial terminal, you should make sure that IRAP responds to commands as expected. To test this, try sending AT followed by a carriage return. IRAP should come back with an OK response. Further, you can send set and info config commands to cause IRAP to send all of the current configuration data. The output of these commands is great to have on hand for reference and in case any troubleshooting needs arise. You can find a full IRAP command reference guide on BlueGiga's website. If you don't get any response from the module when you try sending commands, make sure that your serial terminal's flow control settings are correct. IRAP may be configured so that local echo is disabled, 
in which case you can't see what you type, but responses will still appear. If UART communication is working but the power LED is not on, take this opportunity to adjust the regulator signal setting with the set control VREG EN command with a setting of 202. This configures IRAP to use the PIO1 pin to latch the regulator state and control the LED connected to PIO1 on the WT32i development kit. After applying this setting, the LED should immediately come on. Also, if you switch to battery power, you should now be able to press and release the power button normally to alternate between on and off states. It's also possible to configure the development kit board with a predefined set of IRAP parameters implemented specifically for the DKWT32i board to simplify the configuration steps of IRAP for typical audio use cases. This is accomplished with the IRAP command set dev kit. However, this command is only supported in IRAP 6 build 891 or later, so a firmware update may be necessary depending on the manufacturing date of your development kit. If you need to update the firmware, we'll walk through a simple firmware update procedure using Serial DFU a bit later in the video. To put IRAP into a default state, issue the command set reset. This reconfigures all IRAP settings back to their default values with the exception that IRAP retains the paired devices list. To view the current IRAP configuration state, send set. Now that we've put IRAP into a known configuration state, Let's send set devkit, followed by another set command to output the new devkit configuration. The modifications made by the set devkit command include the following, a new friendly name, a new class of device value indicating audio functionality, a fixed four digit pin code for pairing with older Bluetooth 2.0 devices, sniff mode settings for decreased power consumption, a specific value for service discovery protocol maximum transmission unit size, analog audio routing and event display, five media control actions matching the GPIO push buttons on the development kit board, mic bias settings for the board's built-in microphone, a module generated ringtone for phones which do not support in-band ringtones, the correct voltage regulator latch configuration for power button and LED control, A2DP enabled for high quality audio sync, HFP enabled for hands-free phone call audio and control, and AVRCP enabled for media playback control. As an alternative to using the set dev kit command, each IRAP parameter necessary for typical audio use cases can be set manually. For the A2DP demonstration, we'll use the manual configuration process to help you gain additional familiarity with BlueGiga's IRAP software. To prepare the module for A2DP audio streaming and AVRCP media control, send the following commands. Set BT name to make the module easily identifiable during the pairing process. Set BT class indicating a stereo audio device. Set BT auth to provide a fallback fixed pin code for pairing with legacy Bluetooth devices. Set BT page mode to make the module discoverable and connectable by default. Set BT SSP to enable secure simple pairing with modern Bluetooth devices. Set control audio to enable audio routing event display and to configure audio to be routed to the analog connections on the module. Set control bind to use PIO 10 for volume up, PIO 9 for volume down, PIO 4 for next track selection, PIO 3 to start or resume playback, and PIO 0 to pause playback. Set profile A2DP sync to enable high quality audio streaming to the module. Set profile AVRCP controller to enable media playback control of remote devices. And finally reset to apply the new profile settings. Each of these settings and their parameters are documented in the latest IRAP user guide available from our website. Note that parameters in IRAP that begin with set will be stored in the module's flash memory, remaining persistent after power cycles. Once those settings are applied, go to the Bluetooth settings area of your smartphone and scan for nearby devices. After a few moments, you should see the WT32i module appear in the list with the name given above. Tap on the device in the list to begin the pairing process. Normally, no PIN code entry will be required unless your smartphone does not support Bluetooth 2.1 or later. Typically, the pairing process will complete automatically in just a few seconds. 
and then the phone will automatically connect the first time, resulting in many ring events appearing from IRAP in the serial terminal. Most modern smartphones will automatically open Bluetooth connections for the A2DP and AVRCP profiles. Even though only two profiles are used here, you may see more than two links established as some profiles use multiple connections for proper operation. These links will be given IDs indicated by the number shown immediately after each ring word in the ring event. These events also show the remote device's Bluetooth MAC address and the channel and profile used to open the connection. If desired, you can display the new pairing entry that was just created in IRAP by sending the set BT pair command. Each line displays the paired device's MAC address and the 128-bit key used to encrypt the link. You can also show all active connections by sending the list command. Each line here displays the link ID, profile, connection state, and various other information such as the MTU, total duration, remote MAC address, channel, direction, power state, and role. Now that the WT32i and smartphone are paired and connected, we can begin streaming music to the WT32i development kit board from your connected smartphone. The easiest way to do this is to open your favorite music player app and select a song. After doing this, you should see a few IRAP audio events and begin to hear streaming audio through your speakers or headphones connected to the WT32i development kit. If you do not hear audio, verify that the smartphone is playing music and that the audio output is not specifically directed to the handset speaker or headphone jack on the phone. Most smartphones automatically route audio to a Bluetooth audio device if one is connected, but the audio route can be changed manually on the phone if desired. Also, ensure that you have connected your speakers or headphones to the line out jack and not to any of the other four 8th inch stereo jacks on the development kit board. Once audio is playing, you can control it with the five buttons in the middle of the development kit board, which from left to right cause volume up, volume down, pause, play, and next track. These buttons are configured with the set control bind command to send local volume and remote AVRCP control commands, specifically volume up, volume down, AVRCP pause, AVRCP play, and AVRCP fast forward. If you watch the IRAP output in the serial terminal, you can see each command sent in correlation to the physical button presses. You can also send these same commands manually in the serial terminal to cause the same actions to occur. The volume commands used here affect only the WT32i module's local amplification. It should be noted that it is generally not possible to control the handset's own volume using AVRCP commands due to the way smartphone operating systems are designed. Another useful feature of the AVRCP profile is to receive track and title information for the current song over the AVRCP link. This can be accomplished using the AVRCP PDU20 command. To retrieve the track and title of the currently playing song, send AVRCP PDU20212. AVRCP PDU commands are useful in many audio applications. You can find additional details on IRAP's AVRCP PDU command support in BlueGiga's A2DP application note, available on our website. Now that we've demonstrated both streaming music and basic AVRCP functionality, we'll show you how to perform a firmware update with Serial DFU over the same serial connection used for IRAP communications with the WT32i development kit board. To begin, download the latest IRAP firmware release archive from the Software Releases section of the WT32i Product Documentation and Downloads page on the BlueGiga website. This archive contains the update utility and all of the most recent published firmware images. After it is finished downloading, extract this archive into a folder on your PC. Next, navigate to the Firmware DFU Serial DFU folder and run the Serial DFU application there. Once it starts, select the correct serial port from the drop-down and check the serial port settings. The settings for Blue Core Serial Protocol, or BCSP, should be 115200 baud, 8 data bits, even parity, and 1 stop bit. Note that this configuration is different from IRAP's serial configuration and is unique to the BCSP protocol. 
Make sure the Command IRAP box is checked as well. This instructs Serial DFU to send the boot1 command at the beginning of the process to trigger a reset into BCSP mode for firmware update purposes. Now click the Browse button to the right of the Select DFU file text field and browse to the DFU image to be used for the update. This will be the latest image in the WT32i subfolder inside the DFU tree in the firmware image archive. Usually, you will want the standard image, in this case AI600897.bc5. Other firmware images included in the IRAP software archive are for older versions of IRAP and other application-specific versions. If you are uncertain which firmware image you should use, please contact Blue Giga Support. To start the update process, click the Update button. The firmware update process usually takes between 5 to 10 minutes, and Serial DFU reports progress regularly as well as successful completion. If you receive an error immediately after clicking Update, which indicates the port could not be opened, ensure that no other software has the port open at the same time, including the serial terminal previously used for testing. Only one application may have access to the selected serial port at any time. If the error occurs after many seconds, ensure that the module is connected and powered on properly. Note that if you can access IRAP normally over the UART connection in a serial terminal, the same hardware setup should allow firmware updates with Serial DFU once you close any other serial terminal applications. If the firmware update process fails in the middle, the module will no longer be able to boot into IRAP. However, the BCSP bootloader remains intact and the update process can be restarted at any time with Serial DFU to try again until it succeeds. Always ensure that the module is properly powered during updates, ideally running from USB or another fixed supply rather than a battery. After the firmware update completes, you can reopen the serial port in your terminal software and try some of the commands used previously, such as set or info. The info command in particular will show the current firmware build and is a good indicator of a successful update. Note that the first time you open the serial port after a firmware update, there may be some leftover binary data sent out to the UART interface. This is normal and does not indicate a problem. As you might recall from the unboxing portion of the video, the WT32i development kit includes an SPI programming adapter. In cases where the DFU firmware update process does not work, the SPI programming cable can be used with BlueGiga's AI update utility to update the WT32i firmware using the module's SPI programming interface. Be aware that the SPI programming cable does require the use of a computer with a hardware ECP mode parallel port. One final note. Any firmware updates over the serial interface retain IRAP settings and paired device entries, and you needn't worry about losing any settings after an update. However, it is recommended that you save the set and info command results to a file so you have a record in case you need to refer to them in the future. Thanks for watching! For further details and demos, check out the links in the description as well as any of our other videos. You can also subscribe to our channel to stay informed of new videos.